Can net carbs and high fiber really keep your glucose from spiking? We'll look into that today on Beat Diabetes. Well, it is a Sunday evening and I am uh, eating a little bit late. We're eating a little bit late, but I had to set up for this little quick video. I was at the store today after church and was looking at some of the Sola products that I noticed on the shelf. Sola makes low carb products and they are, seem to be expanding. They started out with just the Sola bread. I think it's around two uh, net grams of carbs per slice, which is good if it's, it lives according to its height. This is the first time I've seen these, the Sola hot dog buns. I, I was intrigued, not that I'm a huge hot dog fan, and I know just me eating hot dogs is going to elicit some comments and criticisms, and Dennis, don't you know how terrible hot dogs are, and they're unnatural, unhealthy, disgusting, perverted, and so forth, but... Um, I'm an American. Americans do eat hot dogs once in a while, even though I do go strongly for a, a healthy uh, lifestyle, healthy uh, eating, but still. I was curious about these Sola hot dogs, so we're going to try them out. First thing, though, I want to see what my blood sugar is. It is uh, later than I would normally like to eat. It is getting close to 7 p.m. on a Sunday evening. And uh, let's just see where my blood sugar stands. Okay, so it's at a 96, which uh, I always like to be under 100. Love to be in the 80s, but that's not always going to be the case. So well, let's put this here. So I, <laughs> this is the cheapest, the fastest meal you could imagine. You microwave a couple of hot dogs, and we've got some mustard. Nice thing about mustard is that it has zero carbs, at least most must, unless it's been sweetened. So this is a zero carb, great value, which is like the Mr. Cheapo brand. Uh, zero carbs. And then we will try two of these Sola hot dog buns. Now, even if I decide to use these somewhat and they pass the mic the meter test, uh, I don't think I would ever like to eat two hot dog buns. Normally, I'd probably just have one with it and then eat the other without a bun. Just the fact that this looks like bread, smells like bread, feels like bread, makes me kind of feel like I'm consorting with the enemy, fraternizing with the enemy. So... Um, now notice that the, the hot dog and the bun, uh, they don't match. Now normally what I would do would be rip off the part of the bun that doesn't line up with the hot dog. No use eating any extra carbs. But since I'm wanting to find out uh, exactly how these are going to affect my blood sugar, I'm going to go ahead and eat the whole buns. Normally I wouldn't even eat two, like I said, but if I did eat one, I'd even rip off the part that doesn't line up with the hot dog, but I'm going to eat it all. Now, what are the stats on this? Well, according to this, one hot dog bun has 19 grams of carbs and two would be 38, which is like, that's more than a can most candy bars. So that's a lot of carbs, right? So you say, how can this be a low carb hot dog bun? Well, the way it is, they've jammed it with fiber. Each bun has 11 grams of fiber, so that's 22 grams you take away, plus they each have two sugar alcohols, so that's another four. Six net grams of carbs per hot dog bun. So if the net grams theory works, and these people aren't lying to me, I should have to deal with 12 grams of carbs. Hot dogs have next to no carbs. Mustard has zero carbs. So uh, let's see just how far this will take it. Like I said, I don't plan to be doing this a lot, but just for my curiosity and for your benefit, I'm going to go ahead and eat these two hot dog buns, and about an hour and 20 minutes after I eat, we will see where it goes. Well, my little handy timer has just told me that uh, it's been an hour and 20 minutes since I finished those two hot dogs. If it weren't for the net gram effect, the net carbs effect, I just ate over 40 grams of carbs, 19 per bun, 19 grams of carbs per bun, 
38 plus a few extra grams of carbs with the hot dogs. They threw in a little bit of sugar. So uh, I had a 40 gram plus uh, meal of carbs if you don't count for the net carbs. And that should raise my blood sugar significantly if the net carbs thing doesn't kick in and help me. So my guess would be if I was just eating a meal of over 40 grams of carbs, which I never do, but if I, if I did, like I just now did, and there wasn't a net carb effect, uh, I'd be over 160, 170 probably. On the other hand, if the net carbs things work, plus they've got some sugar alcohols in here, so it brings it down to about six grams per bun. So that's 12 grams. Still a little bit on the high side. I, I'm not normally even wanting to eat that many carbs. Uh, for a meal, but that's a whole lot better, 12 grams net carbs versus 38 grams of total carbs. So we're going to find out uh, whether this works. And, uh, you know, I can theorize, I can speculate, I can say, well, I wonder, and maybe it's this, maybe it's that, but guess what? I don't have to do that because of this little fella, this little fella named Mike, Mike the Meter. Uh, he doesn't speculate. He doesn't guess. He just gives me a representation of what happened to my blood sugar. So it was like 96 before the meal. Uh, had two hot dogs and two low carb, supposedly low carb buns, although they were really <laughs> high carb but high fiber is why they can be considered low carb. And let's just see what Mike the Meter has to say about this meal. All right, well, I got a 113. And 113 for eating a 40 plus carbs meal is. Pretty good, actually. I would say that's quite good. This is, like I said, an hour and 20 minutes after eating, so this should be the time I would peak. It may not be the time you would peak, but for me, about an hour and 20 is pretty close to when I would peak. So the net carbs effect kicked in for sure. Otherwise, I'd be a lot higher than 113. I'll come back with some closing thoughts a little bit later. Well, I actually have a little bit of new information. I wasn't really planning to, but I got kind of curious and I tested myself about an hour after that 113. So that would have been two and a half hours after eating. And guess what? It actually rose a bit, rose up to 120, which isn't terrible, but still I was surprised it would still be rising. And that made me think about a time where I had the low carb tortillas and they caused me to, to rise. Uh, as late as uh, over three, close to four hours after eating. And that gives me the idea that some of these low carb products that they use a lot of different high fiber ingredients to give them the necessary fiber to keep the net carbs low. Some of these products seem to sort of slow down the glucose rise. Now, granted, 120 isn't terrible. Uh, after eating two hot dog buns with uh, 38 net uh, total grams of carbs. But still, uh, I was surprised it was still rising, which gives me another reason not to really be too thrilled about these. Still, however, 120 as a peak for two hot dog buns uh, wasn't too bad. So get your own Mike the Meter out, test yourself, make your decisions, do what you feel is best for you, but by all means, keep those glucose spikes low. I want to encourage you to join Benedict and me in our home through our new podcast, Discover the Word with Den and Ben. While you drive in your car or while you walk or exercise at the gym, you can be learning the Bible through our low-key, user-friendly Bible studies. To get the information you need to listen to our Discover the Word with Den and Ben podcast, click on the link in the description.